Man, I, I can't even lie. I thought I wasn't going to find a better build this season than the Hazardous Propulsion Explosions build I talked about last week. But somehow, in some way, this build feels just as strong, if not stronger. With this build, you will simultaneously be amplified, radiant, have a void overshield with woven mail, while also having the fastest ability cooldowns you've ever experienced, while creating upwards of five different types of elemental pickups. And this is all while only needing one of the Stoicism exotic traits to match the one I'm using. So you have a ton of opportunity to decide which second column perk fits your playstyle the best. And you know what? While we're on the topic of it, let's go ahead and cover our exotic class item, Stoicism. If you don't know how to get the exotic class item by now, I'll throw a link in the description for somebody who does a way better job of explaining it than me. But um, we're just going to focus on the first column right this second. In the first column, you're looking for Spirit of Inmost Light, which will grant you the exact same cooldown benefits as Heart of Inmost Light, just without that damage increase. And look, don't get me wrong, the 20% boost that Heart gives is it's pretty good, but with some of the perks we can get in the second column of Stoicism, you will never want to use Heart again. But hey, chin up little guy. If you're watching this and don't have a Spirit of the Most Light class item yet, you can use Hoyle in its place and still have an extremely strong build. Let's go ahead and cover the second column perks that I think are absolutely best for this build. In order from best to worst, here's what I'd want you to use. Number one is Spirit of Contact. Having every single power melee jolt enemies is insane. This is also the footage you're looking in the background, so if you have any doubts on if it's good or not, just take a look. The second best option is Spirit of Armentarium. For an ability spam build, this is no doubt the best you can get. If you got your hands on this combo already, you know you have an amazing item. Number three, Spirit of Variety. With regular heart, you can get up to 20% damage boost on your grenade. But with Spirit of Verity, you get 100% extra damage just by getting a kill with the weapon that matches your grenade type. It's an extremely good and extremely powerful role. Number four, Spirit of the Syntheseps. A major damage boost when surrounded by enemies. It's a great option. It makes every melee that much stronger. Then the other four possible options, they're not that bad. But these are the four I'd focus on getting if you can. If you have Spirit of Immense Light and any other trait, I would still use that over Normal Heart. Okay. Now that we've covered our class item, let's go ahead and talk about our subclass. It might be the most obvious thing in the world to say we're running Prismatic. Not only because you need to run Prismatic for the exotic class item to even work, but more the fact you're three minutes into this video and you've probably watched the background gameplay. I think this build encapsulates Prismatic perfectly because it's a mod podge of a whole bunch of shit into one big homogulus machine that plays together so well. To start, for your super, we're going to use Blade Fury. Ideally, I would have went with Twilight Arsenal because it's just so much fun and it's a, it's a blast to use. But for this build to be the absolute strongest possible, we're going to need this strand super. Then for your abilities, you're going to be using thruster in place of your barricade, shield throw for your melee, and pulse grenade for your grenade. Thruster is the easy, quick, best class item to use when you're trying to spam abilities, so obvious choice. And then shield throw is going to allow us to use our melees from a range and will grant us a void over shield after every single hit. And then the pulse grenade is here because it's a massive AoE that has a massive damage over time effect. Plus, I've just always loved pulse grenades. It's actually one of my favorite grenades to use because it's just so easy. But then shield throw on the other hand, that motherfucker, I have the biggest love-hate relationship with him. He will simultaneously have the worst tracking ever. I'm talking bounce it off an enemy straight into heaven all the way to the sky. And then your next shield throw will be the most insane wall bang seven time ricochet you've ever seen. I, I don't get it. But I do still think it's an amazing choice because that void overshield is going to be amazing and it's the only melee we can proc from a distance. Now for our aspects. And I can't lie. I've spent probably three hours trying to pick the best ones here. The two you're going to want to run are Knockout and Diamond Lance. The main problem I had here was would I rather have an extra aspect spot by swapping Knockout for Dringer's Lash or stick with Knockout? And obviously I chose Knockout. And the reason I did is because Knockout will not only grant you health and bonus melee damage after every single melee kill, but it will also amplify you after a single melee kill, making us move that much faster and granting us some damage resistance that we'll cover later. Then I went with Diamond Lance because all we need to spawn one is an ability kill. And in this build, there is no issue with ability kills. Being able to spawn a Diamond Lance is so underrated. And I think it helps a lot in higher tier content where we can just freeze higher tier enemies and help us minimize their effectiveness. And I'm so sorry if you hear my cat playing in the background. He's having a ball back there. So we already have the ability to uh, heal, spawn a Diamond Lance, become Amplified, and uh, get an Overshield. So you can already see how insane this build is going to be. So now let's talk Fragments. Up first, you're going to use Facet of Balance, which will grant us melee energy when you rapidly defeat an enemy with light damage, 
and grant grenade energy when you rapidly defeat enemies with dark damage. It, it doesn't get more self-explanatory than this. More energy is good. Um, we're going to be using uh, a little bit of a mixture of both, so enjoy. Next up, Facet of Dominance. Your Void Grenades weaken targets, and your Arc Grenades jolt targets. Like I was talking about earlier, I love Pulse Grenade, and with it jolting, it gets that much better. It's truly an amazing fragment. Facet of Awakening. Rapidly defeating targets with light or darkness damage generates an elemental pickup of the matching damage type. I think I think you, you might not be understanding this correctly. I think some of you guys might have other builds you're using, and you're not using this, and you need to get your shit together. This is actually so much better than it sounds, and this is one of the reasons I think this build is so strong. It will apply to anything. Oh, did, did you just get three kills with your Void Shield? Well, here's a Void Breach. Oh, your Pulse Grenade jolted and killed a few enemies. Oh, what's that? Oh, here comes a cute little Ionic Trace to bring you 12% energy for every single one of your abilities. Huh? Oh, you killed a group of ads with your Incandescent Hand Cannon. G go collect your reward. The Fire Sprite is waiting for you. I could go on all day about how amazing this fragment is. Facet of Hope. While you have an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. Uh, cooldown, 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 cooldown. That is the name of this build. This fragment gives us another boost. We're taking it. Then to wrap it all up, we have Fragment of Purpose. Picking up an orb of power grants either Amplified, Restoration, Frost Armor, Woven Mail, or an Overshield based on the damage type of your equipped super. And this is how we're getting yet another one of our buffs. And because we have Blade Fury, we're going to get Woven Mail with every orb pickup. Okay, we talked about that for a lot longer than I thought, and I'm so sorry. Let's go ahead and talk about what weapons you're going to want to use in this build. In this build, I found using a wide variety of guns to be the best option, because of Facet of Awakening. So I usually go with something like The Call, Luna's Howl, and Edge Transit. This is because The Call will spawn a Tangle for us, Luna's Howl is going to get us a Fire Sprite so we can get some melee energy, and Edge Transit will spawn a Void Breach, which gets a good chunk of class ability energy. But after running that for a good while, I remembered Arc Weapon spawn Ionic Traces. And you know what Ionic Traces give? Yeah, we just covered this. 12% uh, of every single ability energy. That is the most out of every pickup, and you get and it attracts to you. What? So if you have a good indebted kindness, you'll be able to farm the living hell out of these until your tummy is nice and full. Or abilities, same thing. But also keep your eye out for a weapon with pugilist or demolitionist, because that's obviously an amazing choice too. And on top of that, don't forget the fact that brave weapons will give you 5% melee energy per kill in this build. And you can even still farm them. So if you went out and got your hands on a demolitionist forbearance, that will grant you 10% grenade energy, 5% melee energy, and spawn ionic trace on top. But truly, to have the most fun, use any weapon that makes you the most happy in this build. Now for our armor modulars. As you can see on screen, we're just trying to spawn a ton of orbs and generate a ton more ability energy. Make sure you're using the correct siphons with whatever weapons you're using. Then on top of that, if you find yourself getting more grenade kills, maybe you have armamentarium, switch that melee siphon to a grenade siphon. But everything else is pretty much what I recommend in every single build. When you pick up an orb of power, you're going to get a ton of ability energy with a chunk of health on top. Then using your thruster is going to give you ability energy while also making your next kill spawn an orb of power. And now for the seasonal artifact. I'm really trying to pick up the pace here because this video is about to be so long and I'm so sorry for that. But if you enjoy the longer form content and you like the longer more in-depth videos, please let me know. I want to make content you guys want to watch. I don't care what you do in the first two rows because your body, your choice. But in the third column, I'm going to suggest you use an elemental siphon if you're using a kinetic weapon in this build. So at the very least, you can create a tangle from kills. Then in the third column, I have two requirements. Up first is radiant orbs. So while you have prismatic equipped, you become radiant when picking up an orb of power. Boom. Another buff for us to munch on. Which is 15% damage boost on all of our weapons. Secondly in that column is galvanic armor. So while we're amplified, we receive reduced damage. We'll become amplified from just getting our kills. And with our jolting pulse grenade, this is going to be extremely easy. Then to wrap it all up, in the final column we have shield crush. While you have woven mail or avoid over shield, your melees will deal more damage and recharge faster. And while you're amplified or radiant, the same will apply to your grenades. What in tarnation? This is quite literally what we've built this entire build for. It is the perfect icing on the cake, more damage, more ability regen, 24-7. Because we'll have woven mail and radiant just from picking up an orb of power, which we'll be generating all the time. Okay, and here's a final overview of the build. Let me know if this helps you or not. I want to give you as, as much information as possible in one photo to make copying the build as easy as possible. And hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Like I mentioned earlier, please let me know how you feel about the long form content. I really want to be more in depth and I want you guys to enjoy the videos, but I really enjoyed making this build and I think Prismatic has helped me activate my third chakra when it comes to build crafting. See ya!